Hi, my name's Mark Price-Mayer, um, and welcome to my data minute session. Um, da, ba, ba, oh, it's all blurred. Oh, no. Oh, uh, yeah, there you go. All right. Got to do all that. So today we're going to be rushing through um, serverless SQL calls. So the idea is I've got my agenda, so it's animations. There we go. Um, the best practices are here. You can just open that link up and everything pretty much I'm going to talk about is on here. And there's a few secret things. Secret, secret. So there's a few things that we say that are undocumented, which I want to cover um, and that might not be obvious, but I'm going to assume people haven't played with Synapse SQL pools, but I'm not going to explain them. I'm not going to go into Synapse. I'm not going to do any of that. We're just going to have a bit of fun. We're going to create some things and we're going to look at some scripts. So let's create a DB. Let's browse some files. Let's use preview. I'll show you a little trick in there. Let's query some files. We'll use file path. Uh, we'll create a view, a store procedure. Um, we'll look at cost, data types. And then when we've got enough time, if we have enough time, um, we have about eight minutes left, eight minutes, 38 seconds left. We'll talk about permissions. So the idea is I am rushing. I am trying to cram as much in and hopefully um, it won't be too garbled. OK, so very simply, we're going to create a new SQL pool. SQL database, serverless, and we'll call this data minutes. The reason why I'm doing this is that when you start and you create your Synapse workspace, you don't have a SQL pool. You'll have nothing in here. And then you'll, you can run queries, but you can't save any of the metadata. You can't save any views, et cetera, external tables. So I'm just creating one because just to show you how quick it is and it works. All right, let's go and browse some files. So we have to go over to link services. We'll go to our storage. And I'm going to go in and I can go in and look at my file system, go through folders. I'm going to more files, and this is one of my files. It's, it's a CSV, but it's named text. So if I right click, I can do things like preview. Um, and I can do new SQL script. I can't do a serverless query on it. It's not appeared. Right click, rename. And there's a similar trick with Parquet files as well. Ah, dun, dun, dun. There we go. CSV, there are no headers in it, right. but at least it shows you that it will work. And the same thing is if I'm picking up a Parquet file, it will just work. All right, so we've now browsed some files. You only look at one file at a time. If I wanted to look at a directory um, of files, I simply just go, well, give me everything in that directory. There we go. And I can then do multiple directories. But I'll show you that in a second. So we did preview and we did rename. Let's go to some querying files. Let's use file path. <coughs> so. These are some files. They're just in a slightly different folder. I'll show you where they are. There you go. And what I've done is I've got a file here. I've also got some in some subfolders. Um, and then I can say, give me the top 100 and I'll use a function called file name. And this bit of result here is actually just referring to this. We just called this query, the output of this query result. But I can put where clauses in. So I can say where the file name has PIRK in it. There we go. And that first bit there is dumping the file name out. Now, if I want to get a bit fancier, I can say, well, give me everything in a set of subfolders. Um, and then there's another function called file path. Now, the way it works is that one is referring to the first star, the two is referring to the second star, the three is referring to the third star. And then effectively, I'm going to do a group by. There we go. So I can see that part of the file path was 20, 2020, 2019, um, one, 
and then the file names. And in fact, it's the same file, I've just uploaded it many times, which is why we've got that. So you can see that this maps to this, go back here. Excellent. So I'm just checking the time again. Four minutes and 38 seconds to go. What I can also do is I can now use that file path to restrict what's coming back. Now, what this does is in the background, it's collecting um, effectively the directory structure and filtering it out. So it's not getting every single file and then filtering it out, um, the contents of the files and filtering out. It's saying, give me all the files, effectively a directory listing, sort the directory listing out, only looking for these, and then just return those results. And you can see that it's just coming back. And if so, turning more, I would get them. We can do things like create views. Now, where this comes in really cool is I can actually then have Power BI looking at my serverless data database. Um, and now I can select and have Power BI just looking at the views. I've done this earlier, shouldn't I? Something that isn't obvious is stored, actually dynamic SQL is also supported. I did have an example of that, but I can't show it to you. Is stored procedures are supported. Um, okay, I'll show you in here, I'm in the test database, so I can have multiple tests. If I go in here, uh, oh, 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 it's not there. Um, program about or about where stored procedures are stored isn't um, it will execute isn't um, on here but if you go into uh, management studio you'll see program compatibility stored procedures and there it is and we can do the same thing and we can do but I'll just do new script there we go. I have time so much so little to do and so much time um costs and query history um if i want to see the queries that are executing right now i can use this if i want to see the queries that I have executed um if i want to see the costs if it be all the data that i've used today it's this one um and that's because i'm a, i created this this morning it's all the same if i look at this i can see all the queries that have executed and how much data they've used um Actually, this one isn't documented. Shh. All right. One last little tip is data types. It's a SQL engine. Data types are super important. If you just let Parquet pick up on stuff um, and you let CSV work, which auto detects, it's going to pick really wide data types. If we can use this to actually work out what the data types are, and we can actually specify the data types when we're making the query, your queries will run much faster. Okay, and now I've got approximately one and a half minutes to talk about security and context. Now, this is probably the hardest bit to cover, and I've given it the least amount of time. So, when I am viewing my linked, my storage in here, this bit here, and this bit here is running in the context of the MSI of the workspace. When I am running my query here, I'm actually running it as me. So there's, a, you just have to be aware that these are slightly different contexts, which is why sometimes you'll, you'll try and go to some storage and you'll see, um, if we now do this, if we now do preview, I can preview this. But if I now rename it, rename SQL, I've only got a few seconds left, you'll see this error message saying it's in use or now this is to do with I don't I don't have the permissions to view this file even though the workspace does now to get around this problem we have to set the ACLs on the file level um, we either set um, and then I will then have permissions now the last thing is with 15 seconds left is you can either set yourself up as a um, blob data storage contributor, which will give you access over the entire storage account or set the ACLs, but they need to be set at every level. And where people fall down is 
So they set them on the files and folders, but they don't set them on the container. 